Hello everyone, welcome to our channel. In this video we are going to talk about 10 facts of lapis lazuli gemstone. So before starting this video please like this video, and subscribe to this channel for our future updates. Lapis lazuli is a semi-precious stone valued for its deep blue color. The unusual name of this gem is composed of lapis, the Latin word for stone, and azula, which comes from the Arabic and means blue. It is formed as a metamorphic rock of the limestone type. Lapis lazuli is semi-translucent to opaque with a waxy to vitreous luster. It has a hardness of 5 to 5.5 on the Moss scale of mineral hardness. Lapis lazuli or lapis for short is a deep blue metamorphic rock used as a semi-precious stone that has been prized since antiquity for its intense color. Here are the 10 facts about lapis lazuli. Number 10. Lapis lazuli was mined in Badakhshan province in northeast Afghanistan, as early as the 7th millennium BCE in the Sar-Isang mines, Shortugai and other mines. Barana the oldest site of the Indus Valley Civilization, has been discovered with lapis lazuli artifacts dating back to 7570 BCE, the Indus Valley Civilization 7570 to 1900 BCE put a high value on lapis. Lapis beads have been discovered in Neolithic burials, as far as Mauritania and Mergar in the Caucasus. It was used in Tutankhamun's 1341 to 1323 BCE funeral mask. Lapis lazuli started to be shipped to Europe by the end of the Middle Ages where it was ground into powder, and turned into ultramarine the finest and most valuable of all blue pigments. Ultramarine was used by some of the Renaissance, and Baroque's most important artists including Masaccio, Perugino, Titian, and Vermeer and was often reserved for the clothing of the central figures in their paintings, especially the Virgin Mary. Ultramarine has also been discovered in medieval nuns and scribes dental tartar, Number 9. Lapis lazuli continues to be abundant in northeast Afghanistan thanks to mines. Significant quantities are also made in mines west of Lake Baikal in Russia as well, as in the Andes Mountains of Chile from which the Inca carved objects and jewelry. Pakistan, Italy, Mongolia, the United States and Canada mine smaller amounts. Lazurite, 25-40%, is the most important mineral component of lapis lazuli, a blue feldspathoid silicate mineral with the formula, Na, Ca, 8, aluminium silicate, 6, S, SO4, Cl, 1 to 2. Calcite, white, sodalite, blue, and pyrite are all present in lapis lazuli, metallic yellow. Augite, diopside, enstatite, mica, haunite, hornblende, noshan and Sulfur-rich lalingite gayerite are all contained in lapis lazuli samples. Contact metamorphism produces lapis lazuli which is most commonly found in crystalline marble. The presence of the trisulfur radical anion in the crystal causes the vivid blue hue. A very intense absorption line at max 617 nanometers results from an electronic excitation of one electron from the highest doubly filled molecular orbital, number 24 into the lowest singly occupied orbital, number 25. Number 8. In the Koksha River Valley of Badakhshan Province in northeastern Afghanistan, where the Sari Sang mine deposits have been worked for over 6,000 years, lapis lazuli is found in limestone. Lapis was mined in Afghanistan by the ancient Egyptians and Mesopotamians as well as the later Greeks and Romans. As part of Egypt-Mesopotamia ties, Ancient Egyptians acquired the material through trade with Mesopotamians. The Harappan colony now known as Shortugai was built near the Lapis Mines during the height of the Indus Valley Civilization around 2000 BCE. According to the leading work on the origins of Lapis Lazuli, in modern times by Sorbonne mineralogist Pierre Barriand, and references in Afghanistan's Blue Treasure Lapis Lazuli, 2011, by Lily McNair Bakhtiar, Lapis lazuli is contained in caves that are not generally considered mines, and the stone lapis lazuli is from the Hindu Kush Mountains, primary source in Afghanistan's Kachka River Valley. In addition to the Afghan deposits lapis is mined in the Andes near Avail, Chile, and at the Tultui Lazurite deposit in Siberia Russia west of Lake Baikal. It is mined in smaller quantities in Angola, Argentina, Burma, Pakistan, Canada, Italy, 
India, and California and Colorado in the United States. Number 7. Lapis can be used to make jewelry, carvings, frames, mosaics, ornaments, small sculptures and vases and it polishes beautifully. Lapis may also be used to construct interior objects and finish structures. Lapis is used in the design of two of the columns, that frame the iconostasis in St. Isaac's Cathedral in St. Petersburg. Lapis was ground and processed during the Renaissance to produce the pigment ultramarine, which was used in frescoes and oil paintings. When a chemically similar synthetic variety became available in the early 19th century, it was largely phased out as an oil paint pigment. The Gilson process which is also used to render artificial ultramarine, and hydrous zinc phosphates is used to commercially synthesize or simulate lapis lazuli. Spinel or sodalite as well as dyed jasper or howlite may be used in its place. Number 6. Since the Neolithic period when the ancient trade route between Afghanistan and the Indus Valley was created, lapis lazuli has been mined in Afghanistan and exported to the Mediterranean world and South Asia. These beads have also been discovered in large quantities in 4th millennium BCE settlements in northern Mesopotamia, as well as at the Bronze Age site of shar e sukta in southeast Iran, 3rd millennium BCE. The royal tombs of the Sumerian city-state of Ur from the 3rd millennium BCE held a dagger with a lapis handle, a bowl inlaid with lapis, amulets, beads and inlays depicting eyebrows and beards. The Akkadians, Assyrians and Babylonians used lapis for seals and jewels in ancient Mesopotamia. It is mentioned many times in the Epic of Gilgamesh, 17th-18th century BCE, one of the oldest known works of literature in Mesopotamia. The irises of the eyes of the statue of Ebi-il, a 3rd millennium BCE statue found in the ancient city-state of Mari in modern-day Syria, and now in the Louvre are made of lapis lazuli inlays. Number 5. Lapis lazuli was a common stone in ancient Egypt for amulets, and scarabs among other things. Excavations at the pre-dynastic Egyptian site of Nakeda, 3300-3100 BCE, uncovered lapis jewelry. Thutmose III's, 1479-1429 BCE, relief carvings at Karnak depict lapis lazuli fragments, and barrel-shaped items being given to him as tribute. Cleopatra used powdered lapis as eyeshadow. Lapis lazuli jewelry has also been discovered at Mycenae, indicating links between the Mycenaeans and Egypt's and the East's founded civilizations. Pliny the Elder described lapis lazuli as opaque and sprinkled with gold specks. The stone was symbolic of achievement in the old Jewish tradition, because it combined the blue of the heavens with the golden shimmer of the sun. Lapis lazuli was believed to be the stone of Virgin Mary in early Christian culture. Number 4. After it is cut and before it is sold as finished gemstones, sculptures or ornaments, lapis lazuli is often handled. Since lapis lazuli is slightly porous it may take and retain dye. A blue dye has been used to remove the visibility of white calcite in a lot of the products that makes it to the market. The dyed calcite is then sealed with wax or oil, which increases the luster of polished surfaces and seals the dyed calcite. Lapis lazuli was known as sapphire sapphirus in Latin sapphire in Hebrew in late antiquity, and the Middle Ages, though it had little to do with the blue corundum variety sapphire we know today. The Greek scientist Theophrastus identified the sapphirus which is speckled, with gold in his book on stones a description that fits lapis lazuli. Number 3. There are many references to sapphires in the Old Testament but most scholars believe that they are most likely references to lapis lazuli, since sapphire was not recognized before the Roman Empire. And they saw the God of Israel and there was under his feet, as it were a paved work of sapphire stone says Exodus chapter 24 verse 10, KJV. The word lapidus sapphire which is the Latin term for lapis lazuli, is used in this citation in the Latin Vulgate Bible. In most cases modern Bible translations such, as the New Living Translation 2nd edition refer to lapis lazuli rather than sapphire. Number 2. Artists and chemists started producing synthetic blue pigments, as alternatives to ultramarine blue made from lapis lazuli in the mid-1800s. The term ultramarine is also applied to some of these pigments. An artist finding ultramarine pigment made from lapis lazuli today must ensure, that the pigment is authentic lapis lazuli and not synthetic. 
The benefits of synthetic ultramarine pigments are numerous. Their blue color is generally darker and more consistent than standard ultramarine and they are also substantially less costly. The use of ultramarine and other expensive pigments was considered by a few master painters to be an important part of making paintings with the best color. Number 1. In 1889 Vincent van Gogh, 1853-1890, painted the Starry Night with ultramarine. The oil on canvas painting which is, now in the collection of the Museum of Modern Art in New York City, is considered one of his best works it is a well-known work of art. In about 1665 Johannes Vermeer, 1632-1675, used ultramarine to paint the girl with a pearl earrings headscarf. The oil on canvas painting has been shown in museums all over the world, and it has also inspired a novel and a film. It is currently in the Mauritius in the Hague's collection. In his oil on canvas painting of Bacchus and Ariadne Titian, 1488-1576, used ultramarine blue to paint the dramatic sky and draperies. The painting is currently on show at London's National Gallery. The robe of Mary the mother of Jesus has been painted in ultramarine blue by several painters. Between 1640 and 1650 Giovanni Sassiferato, 1609-1685, painted the Virgin in prayer which is one of the most vivid examples. The painting which is oil on canvas is on display at the National Gallery in London. What do you think of our list? Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video and want to hear from me again, be sure to hit that subscribe button before you go.